Now let me tell you, this also applies to Christians because Christians can get colder than a cucumber. For the only way that a Christian can stay alive and vital is to renew his or her mind and stay in fellowship and stay walking on the Word. That's right. But boy, number one, use what you have in Christ. Use it. Number two, if there's any animosity against it, or, you know, you particularly, shake the dust off of your feet. Don't you carry a grudge. Don't you carry any animosity. Because, you see, you just can't have that stuff eating away at you. You just can't have that stuff gnawing at you. For if that gnaws at you, then you're just as bad as they are in your walk. That's why we must be the kind of people who have no corn. Physical and spiritual. So that when people endeavor to walk on your tootsies once in a while, you don't get hurt. You simply shake the dust off your feet. Carry no resentment, no bitterness, no animosity. Right, that's what he's talking about. Really something, isn't it? Now, verse 42. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many did what? On him. But, but, because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be what? Boy, great people, aren't they? Boy, ministry, how about us? What about us? That's right. It's easy to talk about these fellows, you know. We can understand this perfectly. But our walk, like the fellow went to a meeting, five sessions they had. Did you write this? Did you? Now, wait a minute. I think you're the one. No, not this one. You're not accountable for what I'm going to tell, huh? You people hear how I was reprimanded for the story I told during the recent class over here. Uh, that night I got the beetles all mixed up with, uh, with termites. <laughs> uh, they told me I better learn to tell stories and somebody else told me I better quit telling stories. <laughs> right. You remember that night I told the story. I got the beetles mixed up with a termite who I said came into the bar. <laughs> And he crawled up on top of the bar, and he said to the man in charge, Is the bar tender here? So, <laughs> and I tell you, I got the beetles in there, got all worked backwards. Nobody preaching. So, I'm not going to tell you this one. Because I'm going to tell you this one. I think Marion is the one who told it to Catherine, and Catherine wrote it down. Or something. I've forgotten it anyway. <laughs> there were some people who believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they couldn't confess it openly. Because they were afraid of being put out of the what? The same thing is true today. The same thing is true today. Because if you really confess the word of God, I do not know of any denomination. That's right. You know why? Because we have become so acclimatized and systematized to sense knowledge operation that the greatness of the power of God will break through the framework of the particular organization to which we belong. The word of truth, ma'am, is always bigger than anything we institutionalize or denominationalize or any other which way. I'm not telling you to get out. I'm simply telling you you're not walking. If we would really walk on the practical side of this wonderful ministry, you would be sitting in Sunday school, you'd be sitting in churches, in women's guild meetings, young people's meetings, adult men's <coughs> meetings, and the moment the Word of God is open and they hash it to pieces, you straighten it out.
with great bold. Otherwise, you'll be in the same category they were here. The chief rulers believed, but they could not confess him openly because they would be tossed out of what? Is that what we're afraid of? Civilizations have been moved not by followers, but by leaders. Civilizations have been changed by men and women who dared to believe. That's right. And any time you dare to believe, you will always stick out like a sore thumb in high school, grade school, college, university, and in life. That's right. The Galileo. What would they have done to him? Well, they did, didn't they? Finally <coughs> killed him. You could go through, I could go through and list many. This is true of every. Jesus Christ, the greatest advanced leader the world has ever seen. What they do to him? Why, sure. This is, this is always the road. Yet without the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, without men like Paul and Peter after the day of Pentecost, not before, because before the day of Pentecost they said what thing did another, but after that day they turned the world upside down. And yet it cost them their life. This is a day, people, for pioneering. This is a day for moving. This is a day for taking a stand and really pushing. The same as it was in the day that we're reading here from the 12th chapter. And verse 43 says very plainly why. For they loved the praises of men more than one. Praise of God. That sounds they love the praises of men more than the praise of God. I can't make the decision. You make it. We have to make it for ourselves. Does V.P. Weirwell love the praise of men more than God and therefore I deny the word? Or do you love the word of God more than men? There's no in-between. Either do or you don't. It's as simple as all that. Therefore, we go back to where we started, verse 48. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my want, hath one that judgeth him, the word that I have spoken. The word is that which judges him. The word. You and I are judged by the word. The word judges us. I do not judge you, she does not judge you, he does not judge you, but we are judged by what? The Word. The Word. This is why we need to take this Word of God and make it practical in our living. Utilize it this week. Put it into practice. Put it to work. Because otherwise we'll be just like the Pharisees were the rest. You've got the ability. It is Christ in you. What? Over. Had Satan known this would happen, he never would have what? Well, boy, he must be scared to death. And you see, as long as he can keep us in our little shells and keep us confined and keep us from talking, he might as well give up. Because he's got us hooked. But Christ in you gives you something, class. Just imagine... When you walk down the street tomorrow, you're out in the farm or in the shop or factory, wherever you're working, whatever you're doing. When you walk there, if you're a Christian, it's Christ in you. Christ in you. Does this give you power? Oh, bless God, sure. It gives you tremendous power. Overall, the power of what? Amen. He will supply all of our need according to his what? Above all, that thou mayest prosper and be sick all week and be in what? Good health. This is in 
John, isn't it? First John, beloved, yes. Uh, third John, verse 2. Don't look it up. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest what? Prosper and be in what? Is it God's will then? Well, why don't you repeat? Huh. I tell you, I think, how many teachers we got in here tonight? We got one sitting over here, next one. Uh, we got teachers in here. I'll be sure. I think the teachers are the second bunch. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I never saw such a bunch of sick people as those teachers I got in that St. Louis place. I tell you, buffering. And think of all of them now. Aniston, we've got three or four people in that class. We're taking as high as 12 to 15 different kinds of pills a day. Right. Friday night, Thursday night, by Thursday night, some of those had already given up all that stuff. I never tell them to. I just, I never ask them to. I just tell them it's a good deal. How's that? And they start to believe it. They start walking. Then you don't need your ass. You don't need your butt. But you see, as long as you stay negative, as long as you stay full of fear, as long as we do not realize it's Christ in us, We've only got two or three people in the class who are not saved. Everybody else is. But the, un the marvelous thing is the unsaved ones don't need the pills. <laughs> the Christians in the class are the sick ones. They're the ones that are loaded up with that stuff. Well, if Christ is in you, but you see, not knowing this, not understanding it, not understanding it, they cannot use it. They do not employ it. What if Christ is in you? Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be what? Does that apply to tonight? How about this week? That's why, ladies and gentlemen, this will be the best week you've ever had. This will be the best week you'll ever have because you can walk out of this place tonight with a little bit of the renewed mind. And you can thank God and keep thanking Him and expect it to be the best week. I know you're good now. I got you here. Uh, <laughs> but what about tomorrow? You see, tomorrow you get back into that old society and the first thing tomorrow morning, somebody will, you ask them something or they'll say something to you, will be a negative answer. You say, how are you this morning? Oh. <laughs> my stomach hurts, my head hurts, everything else hurts, and you're off to negative running. But tonight, you're positive. Now, if you can stay hitched on this till next Sunday, this will be the most wonderful week you've ever had. Why not? It's a Methodist back there. <laughs> <laughs> you see, this is how I want you to put this into practice. Try it out. Try it out. Christ is in you. All right. Let this be a wonderful week. Let it be a wonderful week. We all have problems. Well, problems are God's opportunity. And God in Christ is in us. This is why the thing can happen. So just believe God. Have a wonderful week.